Welcome home to Radiant Life Church, where everyone counts. Thanks for taking the time to join us today for our online service. Okay, I'm really excited because we are taking a journey through the book of Philippians called Finding Joy. Mm -hmm. And in the last few days, I've really found joy. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I mean it. It started with a phone call from my friend Steve Gilreath, who used to direct the Bible Man DVDs that we were involved in. And uh, he lives in Nashville, and he invited me to breakfast because he was here in the Sacramento area. So. Awesome. So we met up in Elk Grove, we had breakfast together, and he gave me a copy of a book that he just wrote called Cell Montana, which is a book of fiction. And I realized I haven't read any fiction mm -hmm. since I was in college. So I was really excited to take this book with me on a study retreat up in the mountains just a couple days later. And, uh, and that's where the story gets good. Because after meeting with Steve, I drove around the area where we had breakfast, and I started hearing this thump, thump, thump sound while I was on the phone with uh, the producer of our Bible Man videos uh, who came to my mind and uh, I said hey let me pray with you as I pulled into this parking lot we prayed together and I got out of the car and I looked at the front passenger tire and I saw this bolt sticking out of my tire this uh, is not good <laughs> it, it was a pretty good sized bolt and uh, I said hey uh, Dan would you would you keep me in prayer because I've got a bolt in my tire he's like I mean, you got to get that fixed right away so I drove about a mile and a half to uh, the nearest location of the shop where I had bought my tires mm -hmm. And, um, and the whole way I was just praying, you know, God, please don't let my tire deflate. Please don't let my rims go bad. God, please don't let us go broke on this deal. You know, <laughs> I was just praying. And, and the interesting thing is I wasn't getting angry or frustrated. I was expecting God to show up. Mm -hmm. And when I got to uh, the place where we bought our tires, I, I got out and the tire hadn't even deflated. That's awesome. So it was super cool. The bolt was just plugging the hole. I went inside. And I said, hey, why, while you're at it, would you please rotate my tires? And I don't remember the last time I had my tires rotated, but I just asked him to do it. And so um, they, they said, hey, sir, would you come over here and take a look at this? Because they rotated my tires, they looked at all four. They were only going to plug the one. But when they looked at the back tires, the inside of both of my back tires were, were, were worn down so badly, it was worn to the second layer of rubber, which is almost like completely bald. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was planning this trip up into the mountains. And so that was kind of this wake-up call that, hey, I need to do something safe and got those tires changed. Now, the, the point of this story is that if I had just been bummed out about my, my punctured tire and just in a hurry and rushed through, I could have had lost my joy, had a terrible attitude, mm -hmm. and missed the opportunity to get my back tires replaced and maybe had an accident on my way up into the mountains. But God showed up in this moment mm -hmm. and, and maybe saved my life. And so I got to tell you, I not only didn't lose my joy, but I have found greater joy because I know that God works through every circumstance to yeah. accomplish great things. Yes, he does. And you were able to keep a good perspective. In Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You know, no matter what circumstance we're going through, um, God is working things out for our good. And we can hold on to that truth that he has got great things in store for each one of us. Amen. That's that's what finding joy through perspective is mm -hmm. all about, is trying to see things the way God sees them. Hey, let's take a moment and just pray together, mm -hmm. shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your love. And God, I thank you for showing up even in uncomfortable and difficult situations, mm -hmm. God, and, and opening our eyes to, to things we may not have seen or may not have found otherwise. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that throughout this season, Season, we would continue to find joy right where we are in Christ Jesus name yes and Lord I pray for our church family that you would be with each one keep them safe through the season God and continue to fill them with your Holy Spirit with your peace with your joy through the season God pour out your blessings we pray in Jesus name amen amen well let's worship together with Grace and Russell Life Church, it is so good to be back with you again. Um, before we enter into worship, let's just go ahead and pray and y'all pray with me. Jesus, thank you for this time. 
Father, we thank you for ability, the ability to even be able to do this right now. And Father, we ask that we would be able to feel your presence, Jesus, in a tangible way. Wherever we are, God, whenever we're watching this, Father, we're doing this together. And Lord, we ask that you would honor it, that you would be in it, and that you would just touch us where we need it. And Jesus, give us the strength to meet you halfway. In your name we pray. Amen. This is an older one, but uh, hopefully you'll know it. I have heard you call my name. I have heard the songs of love that you sing. So now I'll let you draw me out beyond the shore.
Church family, what an honor it is for me to get to share with you today. We have been on a journey through the book of Philippians in this series titled Finding Joy. Today, our focus will be on finding joy through perspective. Perspective is simply the way we see things. Isn't it interesting how two people can look at the same thing and have very different perspectives? I came across a couple cartoons that illustrate just that. I want to share those with you today. The first one is of two men in a train. One of them is looking at the bleak scenery, while the other is content looking at the beauty from the windows on the other side of the train. Both are on the same train, but looking at things from two different perspectives. This other picture, we see two prisoners one of them is focused only on the bars to the jail cell window, while the other prisoner can see beyond that and he sees the beautiful landscape. It's so fascinating, perspective. It can really change our outlook. Today we'll be reading from Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1 through verse 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Yodia and I plead with Sintaichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, and whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Dear Jesus, I just thank you for your word, and God, I just pray that you would open up our hearts today, that we might receive from you your grace, your mercy, your love, Lord, and your joy. May we walk away today just filled to overflowing. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. See, in the book of Philippians was written by the Apostle Paul. At the time he wrote this letter, he was in prison. He didn't know if he would walk out a free man or if he would be executed. The uncertainty of his situation could certainly fill him with anxiety, with stress and worry. Yet Paul somehow had joy in the midst of his circumstance. Joy was his starting point. If we choose to start with joy, then as things come our way and our course shifts, we can continue to rejoice since we began with the foundation of joy. Paul tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. And then, because if you're anything like me, we forget and don't hear things the first time, he repeats it. He says, again, I say rejoice. When we consider that Paul was writing this letter while he was in prison, it's hard to fathom how he can find joy in his present condition. What is there to rejoice about? He's in chains in prison, wrongfully accused, and yet Paul rejoices and he tells us to rejoice. But how do you rejoice when life throws you curveballs? When you've just lost your job? How do you rejoice when your child is making bad choices? How do you rejoice when you just found out your spouse has been lying to you? How do you rejoice when you just received a horrible diagnosis? How do you rejoice when you can't figure out how you're going to make it through this month financially? 
See, we can rejoice because joy is not dependent on our circumstances. Joy is always a choice and can be found through shifting our perspective. Despite your circumstances, praise Him, praise God, no matter what you're going through. Maybe this is a great season for you and everything is dandy. Or maybe it's been a real struggle. I know for a lot of people, this has been a really difficult year. Whichever it may be for you, find reason and opportunity to praise Him. Praising God will help shift your perspective because you're no longer focusing on you, but on God. He alone is worthy to be praised. Remember, God can use the difficulties in your life for good. Our problems can be opportunities if we're willing to change our perspective. Paul saw his problem as an opportunity for the gospel to be proclaimed. As he sat in the jail cell, he knew that the word was getting out that he was imprisoned for his faith, and that brought him great joy, knowing that the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, was continuing to be shared. You know, in my own life, God used a song to help Pastor and I change our perspective when we were walking through a really tender time. We had just had an ultrasound at the 12th week of our second pregnancy, and the nurse could not find our baby's heartbeat. We sat with our doctor, stunned and feeling the stings of the words the nurse had spoken to us, that it didn't matter because it really wasn't a baby. We were devastated, and we left that office that day in shock. When we got in the car, a song came on the radio. It was, I will praise you in the storm by casting crowns. It felt like a defining moment for me. I had to choose right then if I was going to sulk in anger and be stuck in how unfair it was, or was I going to still praise God no matter what? Please don't misunderstand. It's okay and it's necessary for us to grieve. And it's okay to be angry. But God was reminding me not to get stuck there. In that moment, I couldn't rejoice about the what. But I chose to rejoice in the fact that I serve a God who doesn't leave me or forsake me. He never changes. He always wants the best for me. And I chose to focus on all that I knew to be true of God in that moment. I chose to praise him in the midst of what I was going through and I took all that weighed heavy on my heart and I laid it down at the feet of Jesus. I knew God was in control as I chose to shift my perspective. Sometimes we need to fret less and pray more. In verse 6, Paul reminds us we can give God all of the anxiety and worry that this world brings to God in prayer. Pray about everything. In verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. We're also reminded in 1 Peter 5, 7, that it says, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. You know, rather than fretting on all the things going wrong around us, we can approach the God, the God of the universe who can make all things work together for good. We serve a God who cares about every detail of our lives. As we bring him our concerns, he will replace our anxious thoughts with a peace that is beyond our understanding. See, God can redeem the pain and the wounds we experience and make them into something beautiful. God can make beauty from ashes, and we're reminded of that in Isaiah 61.3. It says, To comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. That is beautiful. God can make everything beautiful. The last thing we need to do is focus on the good. See, Paul knew 
that what he focused on mattered. In verse 8 of Philippians chapter 4, he says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, this is not actually the first time that Paul had been imprisoned. If we look at Acts 16, we can read about Paul and Silas being in prison together. And let me give you a recap of what happened there. Paul and Silas were on their way to a prayer gathering when they met a woman who was possessed by an evil spirit. Paul prayed and cast the demon out of her, but people got really mad and a fight broke out. A riot, really. And everyone turned on the two men and stripped them of their clothes and beat them with rods and threw them in jail. But Paul and Silas, rather than focusing on the pain of their recent beating, the loneliness, or how unfair their situation was, they made a decision to rejoice. Paul and Silas found joy because of their perspective. When most of us in that situation would be whining, truth be told, or crying, they decided to rejoice in the Lord. They, turned, they changed their focus to praising God in the midst of a bad situation. They prayed, praised God, sang hymns, and they did this before their situation changed. See, they didn't wait to get out of jail to praise God. No, they praised Him while they were still in chains. They weren't praising God for having received provision. They were praising God for who He is. Here's the spoiler if you're not familiar with this account about Paul and Silas. After they had been praising God and praying, an earthquake shook the very shackles that bound them right off. Paul and Silas had chosen to have joy despite their circumstances. They had set their eyes on things above. Colossians chapter 3 Verse 1 and 2 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. A shift in perspective means that we're going to focus on the good, not the problem. If you're taking aim at a bullseye, you need to keep your focus on the very center of the target, not on everything else around it. I got to practice this principle with my family on our last trip to Tahoe, where we got to use our kids' BB guns they had gotten from their grandparents as a gift. I had to zone in to the center of my target and not focus on anything else if I wanted to see results. But how often do we sit around and focus so much of our energy on our problems. We allow them to spin around in our minds and play out all the different scenarios we can come up with. It's exhausting. And then we find ourselves full of fear and anxiety. But God wants you to live in freedom. He wants you to live a life filled with peace. We need to dwell on what is true, what is noble, what is right, and what is pure. I'd like to challenge you this week to join me in putting these things into practice in our lives, just as Paul urges us to do in verse 9 of Philippians chapter 4. Let's begin each day with the foundation of joy. Let's fret less and pray more, and let's focus on the good. There are many practical ways to do this. Maybe just by starting your day with prayer and listening to worship music, or grabbing a journal and jotting down the good things in your life. Maybe jotting down and giving thanks to God. You know, as we conclude, I'd like to read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. It says, Therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on what is seen, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You know, a shift in perspective can sometimes make all the difference. 
let's make sure to fix our eyes on God. The first step in finding joy in this journey is choosing to allow God to be the Lord of your life. He has a great plan for you and an extravagant love for you. He loves you so much that He gave His one and only Son to die for you, for your sins, for my sins. If you haven't ever made the decision to follow Him, I want to give you the opportunity to do so. It's as easy as ABC. The letter A is for admit that you have sinned. The letter B stands for believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And the letter C stands for choose. And today, that's what you can do. You can choose to follow Him by repeating the simple prayer with me. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads with me? Dear Jesus, I admit that I have sinned and I ask you to forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And so today I am choosing to make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, God, for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. That is so awesome. If you prayed that prayer today, we would love to connect with you. You can email us at prayer at rlclodi.com. Together, let's find joy through perspective. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.
Fine. 